just gonna make sure you eat it and done and move on. It's been actually a while since I've seen him this far, very east. He's trying to balance there with these little thin branches. It's great for Tingana because he fits everywhere he goes. He's not actually looking for trouble, he just moves around, smooth hunt. But what we see here happened is the way they do, stealing from another. Jeffrey, so you're asking with a hyena attack a timber? If he's nearby, yes, they would definitely gonna go. Off. Well, I believe they cannot actually see him on the far bank there. But these big hyena, they were definitely gonna got close to him, and he has to move out of the way. His hyena, they have very strong jaws that would easily kill leopard. Especially with Samba since it's very, it's not actually fully growing male. So he has to stay away from the, the hyenas. You can see it in Ghana we paint, so is that he is eaten. always way of digest when they paint like that. Or sometimes fully growing male like Tingana or there is a timber on the far bank. Hardly to see him actually. So size of a Tingana is a full growing male. She would need roughly 3 kg, 3.4 kgs of each meal he would have. So everyone, if we don't get to stay by another vehicle, so I would like to stay for another uh, look here. In the meantime, Let's go across to Trishal in the ocean, Cape Town. I found this glorious little pool here. So, so much going on. Now, I wonder if you can see. First, I'm going to show you the anemone. It's a sand anemone. It's right there. I mean, I hope that you can see where I'm pointing. 
right there. And we've had a couple close calls. Firstly, one of these sea snails that are moving about that I'll point out in a bit. One of them came close, the tentacle touched, and then it pulled back and the snail moved away. There was also a little fish that did the same thing. And that's obviously because anemones will happily take a little fish that comes past. They're ferocious predators. They'll grab anything with those tentacles. As soon as they hold on, the tentacles are sticky and they can pull it into that central mouth. This is quite a small one. It's only about maybe, uh, maybe about three centimeters, four centimeters in diameter. So pretty small, but still very, very, very hungry, very predatory. Now that's just one. So it's not doing too, too much else um, besides sitting there and waiting for food to come past. Now, just a little bit further ahead here, you see these snails that are moving around. Obviously they're snails, so that means that they are um, mollusks. Oh, here comes our little fish. This is a different fish. So much happening in this little, in this little pool. It looks like a tiny clipfish. It's right here. I'm not going to touch the water because as soon as you disturb the water, everything runs away. It's just moving through here. This is the second one. There's another one that's brightly colored in here too. It's black and white. Hopefully that pops out. So these mollusks that are moving around are, are gastropod mollusks. So they're snails. So they've got a radula and they use that radula to scrape off the algae as they move around. And you can see that they're very busy at the moment. And being low tide, it means that there's quite a lot um, of action that we'll be able to see. The action is a slightly slower paced than you're used to seeing in the bush, but it's action nonetheless. So they're moving along. I'm hoping that we'll get a view of its apiculum. Operculum, there you go. Which is the little door it uses to close itself into its shell. But it looks like it doesn't want to show it to us right now. All right, we've seen the snails, we've seen the anemone. Now where is my beautiful black and white tiny fishy friend? The last I saw the fishy friend, it was under this little rock bit here, probably hiding from the much larger snails in the anemone. It doesn't seem to be out just yet. Oh, I was really hoping for that. But it's okay. I mean, this is one of the nicest um, little rock pools I've come across here at Cozy Bay. Just because there is so much happening. I see some some other types of snails as well, and their shells, making them look quite obviously different. But I think within this little pool, my favorite to watch as the other animals came past was that anemone. There we go. Calling all wild earth explorers. We have a new and frankly awesome travel prize for you to win. And beyond Pin, the private game reserve encompasses an impressive 28,000 hectares of protected wildlife land in KwaZulu Natal, South Africa. As you have seen on Wild Earth, and Beyond Pinda showcases one of the continent's finest game viewing experiences and is well known for close-up sightings of the elegant yet elusive cheetah as well as the rare black rhino. Sign up to be a Wild Earth Explorer before the 16th of September and you and a friend could be heading to the magnificent Pinda Mountain Lodge where you will spend three nights escaping the real world at this ultimate safari location. Wild Earth Explorers, it's in your nature.
our competitors are in the room behind me right now for the birding challenge where they have to look at pictures and identify the birds and then separately listen to bird calls and identify them. But it's not easy. This is going to be the toughest one. And here we have the previous year's winners. You can see they're trying to see if they can remember all the answers and look at them, taking a sneak peek. Oh, it's gonna be in trouble now. Oh, this is unbelievable stuff. Here comes a hippo in too. Go in, Parla. There's a hippo coming in. I can't believe what we're seeing here. This is what we'd normally see in East Africa. It's all over. Hippo leaping at the crocodile now. Everything's gone underwater. Expect the unexpected here on Wild Earth Daily. Yeah, we're still sitting here with our lions. It seems like they starting to come back again. As you can see, one of the cubs is standing there and slowly, slowly trying to move back towards where the others are. But none of these animals seems to be feeding now. So one earlier picked up a piece of meat and walked away with it. And like I said, it seems to be getting old, the carcass. And by tomorrow, these animals may have left and go towards water, but they're not moving too far. As you never know about these animals, one of them might want to come back and nibble on the carcass. As you can see, they're just lying not too far from the carcass, so they stay guard. The carcass may be just looking around if there's no hyenas in the area because they, it's going to start getting dark and they know hyenas might try sneaking and get some of this carcass. Even that young male that was trying to feed there, he just decided he's going to leave but he's lying somewhere behind the bushes. Um, hoping to see hyenas coming and see what's going to happen here because it will be really interesting to see more and more hyenas. Yeah, like I said earlier, fully grown male lion can take about 100 kilograms of food per day because that's like 40% of his body weight. So my lion can weigh maybe 230 kilograms, so that's how much you need and, and can easily consume about 20 kilograms at one sitting. And you can see there's another lion is just walking slowly back towards the carcass there. Another one moving back in. So it seems like they're not going to go too far because they know the hyenas might be in the area. Possibly know that even if we don't see any hyenas in the area, but I'm sure these lions, they definitely know there's hyenas, that's why they might want to come back. I thought they're slowly moving away, but they're not. they just been checking around if there's no other predators like hyenas that might disturb them. And maybe in their minds, they know if they go too far from the carcass, the hyenas might sneak in and get the carcass from them. Coming back, they will try get more of that carcass before it's too late for them. But the cubs looks like they so happy. <clears throat> they were playing with the leg, and they couldn't do much about it, and they decided to leave it there. You can see they're just lying, not interested in it, eating. As I said earlier, that was enough for all of them. As you look. At the carcass there, even that one lioness is just sitting there to show that she's had enough to eat, but 
the things, she's just concerned that hyenas may come over. So she does, didn't want to be too far from the car because she's just going to lie there next to that car cause, and keep an eye at the car because she's going around. Might hear a bit of a growl because there's another lioness that's feeding, but well hidden behind the carcass you can just see the hair popping in and out every now and then here we go there's another one that's moving in that's a young male that's coming back next to those cubs there let's see what he can do because the young males even though he's about three years old the dominance is that now if he wants to eat he'll go over there I and mean, then if he really wants to eat from the side where the females are, he can easily go and push them off the carcass, but just decided he's going to do exactly what the other lioness did, just lie next to the carcass. He looks young, but they developed this... Yeah, this young male will develop this hate against hyenas, even though he's still young, if a hyena will come here, he will be the first one to go after the hyena. We're just going to spend maybe another 10 minutes and if there's nothing happens, then we're going to leave these animals. Let's go over to Andrew with his leopard. So we're still sitting here, Tingana is still sitting right here at the top, as you can see how he's trying to balance, he's still actually balanced there, you know, with now the difference being lions and being a leopard. Of course, male lions always, I know they would be scared of him, but leopards, actually, they're small cats, and many of the hyena, they take chances, they even overpower leopards sometimes and they're still they kill away from them. So this is actually my last look at them because it looks like everybody was having their sun down and now they want to come back, yeah? As you can see, one vehicle's already using their spotlight back there. So lucky they're not shining at the Tingani at the moment. But he's just there chilling. And then leopards, they have a, their own technique of hunt. Solitary, they move alone. But they, that's how they survive. You know, looking at the Tingana, it's an actually, actually a decent male coming pretty much on his prime age. Then he still survive. And in today we can still see him. He's not actually very much territorial at the moment. That's why he fits everywhere he goes. Even though he's still from the young male. But so he's still got a meal there to feed for keeping going for the next like, couple of days until he probably kill another one, he can still also kill for his own. Being older, the claws are still sharp, can use them. They may want a little bit of a tooth, but, and then they're still strong. asking would he also eat the organ so he pretty much and then I seen leopard actually open their intestine and then take all of the fibers out of that there and then he eat all the layer so organ lungs all these kidneys and that's where they gain the moisture and they run that from there they don't actually have to look for water because then they have already moisture from their blood in that animal.
Gary, you asking would he defend his kill even though he's still full? Yes, very much. That's why he wouldn't even move away from there. We can't even see the kill, but it's because of the thick. It's probably on his close to the chin mouth there. He's busy defending it. But from the leopard that is around here, that young male is pretty much defending it. Because another leopard can climb that tree to get it if he's not there. So the reason he sat there, it's all about defending his that kill that he stole from that young male. Because for sure, not actually, nothing goes to waste on their leopards. They would feed on uh, anything they can. With was a what I heard was it? I actually haven't seen what size of a young water was it soft bones and all of these would be taken. Sure. So he's trying to balance the See him painting still. It was actually a little bit of a growl he was about to do there. Perhaps because he's looking and then he can still see that young male every time that the young male do movement. He doesn't trust the young male because he believes that he may take his chances of maybe getting up there and then claim his kill. And that warthog, young warthog, was actually a good size for such a timbre, the leopard. So for him, I think it was not a good idea having this kill where there is another bigger male. So that is kill when stolen. Since we're using the IR light, so there are other vehicles that are responding here, I think they may like to use their light, so and that's why I think we, when they arrive here, we probably can't enjoy anymore because then they would, they would be using their spotlight able to see that sighting. It looks like they're going to have a long night being around here. We have a different angle of the seals now. Still on that rock. Lazing about, hoping to catch some nice sunny warm rays. It's very cold. It's just a little chilly actually. I've been colder here in my last few days here. But they're trying to absorb as much heat as possible, although they are pretty well insulated. These Cape fur seals, they have a nice thick uh, layer of subcutaneous fat or blubber, and also they have two layers of, of fur, or two types of hairs that constitute their fur. So essentially it creates two insulation layers. And they do look very relaxed, all kind of lying on that rock. Well, they usually start their, their pupping season 
around November as we get warmer. So hopefully we'll be in for some really awesome views and sounds of the pups as they move around. Sometimes they play in nurseries. Um, they often try to swim, which is unfortunate for them because they don't swim very well for the first few months. And they often get taken by, by predators. But it is lovely to see them. Now I had a few questions. Jerome, hi Jerome, you wanted to know if anemones had any predators? Well, being a predator themselves, they don't have too many, but you will get the occasional turtle or even a sea cucumber. Um, another kind of dome that, that enjoys them is a sea star. Um, even some fish, actually, will go after them. Yes, they do have the tentacles with the, uh, the nidocytes in it, but, and, or nidocytes, rather, but mm, at least their stinging power, majority of the species that we get here, is not too bad for humans. So those fish could be repeatedly stung. You might find that they'll go back and go back and get a chunk of an anemone for their dinner. Um, I had another question from Chris VDM. You wanted to know how they reproduce. Very interestingly, actually. So they're Nidarians, so they are closely related to um, hydroids and one you'd commonly know, a jellyfish. So they, they reproduce a little bit differently to those organisms that they're closely related to just because they don't have a medusa face. So what that means is that jellyfish, what we see as jellyfish is the medusa phase of a Skyphozoa. That's a class of, of uh, Nidarian. I know it's a lot of words, guys, but we'll get used to it. So, so there are, the, the jellyfish starts off as a little polyp and then the polyp matures and then it buds off and then we get this medusa, the jellyfish that we know and love. But, and uh, hydroid, which is another thing that, that an anemone is related to, that also has a medusa phase, a polyp phase, and then a medusa phase that's, phase that's free swimming, and then a polyp phase again. The anemone is different in that it doesn't have a free swimming medusa phase. But it can reproduce by budding, what's called longitudinal fission. So they stretch out and then split into two. I know it sounds like something out of a horror movie, but they do do it. And they can also bud off bits of them and then create another anemone. But of course, you know what the problem with that is. The problem with that is that you can only reproduce asexually that way. So you can produce lots of offspring, but they'll all be genetically identical to the parent. But they can reproduce sexually. It's just that they throw their gametes out of their central mouth. That's it, and hope for the best. And hope that they throw out my eggs and then hopefully there's some sperm somewhere around in the ocean too that it will meet up with and have genetic variation within that species. Obviously it works for them because they're, they're all over the place. They're very cool, I love anemones. I also had a question from Chris H. Chris H wanted to know if the pools ever get so hot that the animals die. Certainly not in Cape Town, um, but it has happened in the past in other areas, especially in areas where it's very, very hot. Only though, if it is um, like a, a heat wave, so something that the animals are not adapted to, or it's a, somehow f a freak wave has brought it in, has collected some animal into a pool, then ordinarily it wouldn't be in that pool. But it, ha it doesn't happen in Cape Town because it's quite chilly most of the time. Um, but it is, it is something that, that could ha happen. It's just that extreme conditions would usually beg that. Well, I'm going to sit here and enjoy the sunset and I'll share it with you in a bit too. Today we just left those lines there. Yeah, I'm hoping we're gonna see more actions tomorrow when we go back. So it will be really interesting to see if these lines are still there. 
or they've left, even if they've left, there will be more interesting stuff to see there because the vultures, if there's no hyenas, then the vultures who have come down and feeding on the carcass, you might see one or two jackals, you never know, May lions can come in as well and finish up whatever this lionesses have left and yeah we're just hoping to end the day with the leopards as we see driving along this riverbed we're just gonna come out of the riverbed now take another road that leads to one of the small watering hole as you saw we went from one to the other and found some interesting stuff so we're just gonna drive past another small water hole now see if we can come across a leopard drinking there it will be really nice to end the day with the leopard but surely we had a very good afternoon but i'm hoping and let's hope tomorrow it's get even better than this afternoon so yeah just gonna carry on down this road and hope to find a leopard that will be a good finish of the day as you saw those lions are happy so happy to see the cubs feeding because they need to eat oftenly because they're not drinking milk from their mothers now so that's why these lions have to hunt constantly feed the cubs so they can grow bigger it will be really interesting and nice to go back to the carcass and see maybe the white lions will be there also be good to see the white lions have joined the pride because they every now and then they'll join up but as soon as the big males come back and then these guys are gonna leave the pride and go somewhere else but that young male that came in there it's a sign of those white lions that they're not far from that area because we saw him four or five days ago with the rest of the other ones that are missing there including the two white ones yeah so i'm hoping to get back to that area tomorrow and maybe find the white lions feeding at the carcass yeah, as you can see i'm going through this beautiful terrain with a good area for bit of wind picking up of which this is a very good advantage of this leopards hunting this time of the day because if they move into the wind the chances are very good for them that they can sneak on their prey without the prey species hearing or knowing that they are there so we might find a leopard in a tree with the carcass tomorrow you never know so driving down this road because this is where tracks of a leopard have been seen this morning so nothing came out on the road this afternoon and what we're doing so making sure that we drive this road if we don't have on finding this leopard if we come back here and then find tracks we'll know these tracks are on top of our vehicle tracks from tonight so no this animal is not far from this area so we'll start looking from where the tracks are so yeah let's hope to find something before the end of the day but yeah surely i'm hoping to find a leopard down this road and if not i'd say we had a beautiful day so yeah leopard would be nice gonna carry on and see if I can find my leopard along the way. As we celebrate Women's Month in South Africa, we acknowledge and thank those women committed to conservation, working tirelessly both on the front lines and behind the scenes. The Endangered Wildlife Trust is proud of the women who dedicate their lives to fighting to save species, conserve habitats and benefit people. Here's to strong women everywhere who are dedicated to protecting forever together. And for me the best part about being a guide is being able to live out in 
in Africa's wild places and being able to share that with people. Of all the challenges for me, the one that I'm probably the most comfortable with is, is the game drive. I think that's what I do most days, so that would probably be um, what I feel like I'd, I'd do the best at. It's like someone's put little Lego blocks up there and, and made this perfect little sort of statue and there's another one further along as we drive. One of the challenges I'm the most nervous about would probably be shooting. I think on the day there's always quite a bit of pressure and intimidation um, always associated with it, but I guess we'll see, we'll see how it goes. I, I hope I'll win this competition, but if I don't, it's still been a, an experience of a lifetime and I've learned a lot and met a lot of really, really cool people. Goodness, look at its wobbly legs. Oh, I don't believe it. I can't believe we've actually seen it. Oh, my goodness. Oh, careful, careful, careful. Oh, no. Oh, it's okay, little one. Okay. Expect the unexpected here on Wild Earth Daily. I got into wildlife filmmaking because of a passion for nature and a notion that I could make a difference. Helping others fall in love with nature brings meaning to what I do. It's also a lot of fun. A couple of times per week, we receive some very heartfelt messages from viewers telling us about how Wild Earth has made a difference in their life, whether it's helped them through a difficult period or simply helped them to reconnect with nature. I think that's why we do what we do. We are just in time to watch as the sun sets behind the horizon there. We see the cormorants are late to the party this afternoon or this evening. Usually they're flying in already today. They're, they haven't arrived at our cormorant rock, the one that we've been spending time with and, and watching them at. But still beautiful, beautiful scenery here. Really fantastic. The clouds are starting to roll in, um, at least where we are now, and the wind is starting to pick up, so I wonder what that means. I bet you know. I see a few cormorants just on this rock here. Oh, come here. Come close to us. Come say hi to us. No, but there's still a few on that rock over there that have come to roost. Not on the usual rock, not in our, in our usual spot where we've been sitting and watching them for a while. We had a question from Janet Quinn. Hi, Janet. You'd like to know if these seals are vocal and can I hear them? They're not vocal right now, but they certainly are vocal. Um, they pretty much go, oh. As seals do, and then the the pups go. Just like that, um, but they certainly you can hear them from the beach, even though they're out on that rock. You can hear them from the beach when they are vocal, but right now they're not very vocal. They will get certainly very vocal when it comes time for mating and when there's pups around and there's all this activity. Males will start to get territorial, females will start to get territorial as they carve out a little space for their youngins. So I, I think that we'll be lucky and we'll be able to get some nice action with them as the months progress. At the moment I'm just enjoying the calm that comes with being an, at the ocean, especially in the evenings to watch the sunset. I have a few comments as well. C. Cantrell, hi C. Cantrell. You say that the tide pools that we saw earlier are like little fairylands, right? I think so too. 
which is why I love investigating them. I feel like I'm five years old when I, when I squat next to the, the, the little rock pool and point with my little pointer. Ooh, what's this? Ooh, what's this? Ooh, what's this? I love it. I love it. I'm glad that you're enjoying it too. Then uh, I love SA. Oh, I-L-S-A-F. I'm assuming it's I love SA. You want to, oh, you saying that we pick the best spots. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, although I must say you would be pressed to find a spot in Cape Town that is not as scenic as this spot. I mean, everywhere I go, I'm just blown away by the beauty and the, the scenery is just unbelievable. Even just driving on the highway or whatever to get from one point to another, doing normal things is, is so beautiful. It's a different, a different type of life and I enjoy it. Anyway, that's it from us, at least for this afternoon. And I hope that you enjoy the rest of the safari and please say hi to Tingana for me. Oh, very nice what Trisha is enjoying Cape Town. I did myself spend around two years in Cape Town uh, a while ago. I was studying there. So it was very nice. So we made our way to quarantine. It was a bit quiet for us, but the good news is that we went to go check on the Talamatis again. So we did find them again. And uh, unfortunately there was no signal, so that was the bad news. But they moved just inside Juma. So, literally, they just crossed the road uh, from Buffelshoek. So, if they continue in this direction, hopefully there's a good chance that we'll be able to see them tomorrow. That would be quite nice. And what is nice also, it is that Dark Main is currently with them as well. So, it's like a full pride, basically. I didn't, I didn't manage to count exactly how many individuals there was in the pride, but it was very nice to see them and I really hope that tomorrow we'll be able to spend some time with them. <clears throat> it is a little bit windy here, but I'm going to stop here and see if we can look at those impalas. Yeah. So that was nice to see the, the, that we are going in that direction. Hopefully we can find them for you tomorrow. That will create a bit of excitement for our, on ourselves. Very happy also that Andrew managed to relocate in Ghana as well. What a leopard day actually. I heard there was some ainas also there, this is very nice. So I'm sure you're familiar with quarantine. Mostly every night we found quite a lot of antelope coming to to lie there and relax. I did look for white-tailed mongoose again tonight, but no luck. The wind did pick up a bit, so it would be a good chance for the predators to hunt tonight. Obviously, when it's windy, the prey can't really hear very well, so it's an advantage for the predators. You can see this impala there sitting and Showing the cut. I hope it won't, though it doesn't get too much windy. Michael, yes, everything is looking peaceful on quarantine, no alarm call, uh, didn't see any sign of predators around, so they're sitting there and enjoying, uh, enjoying the wide open area, which makes them feel a bit more safe because we can see a bit better but I think with this wind tonight it will be a bit tricky for the the preys one thing which is in their favor it's the moon uh, we're getting quite close to full moon so it gets quite light at night so they will see better they will see better and they will be able to pick up on the on the predators that come around I do like quarantine. It's a beautiful open area, which is quite big actually. It's a good place to watch the sunrise and the sunset. So it's quite a, on a little hill. So you have a good advantage point as well. Yeah, 
Yeah, they look very relaxed there as usual. It would be nice to see an uh, ant on quarantine actually. It would be a good place for a cheetah to hunt, but cheetahs are very scarce here, unfortunately. But to see a leopard as well would be nice. See a leopard hunting on quarantine, which is a bit tricky for them because it's very open. But I think it was a great day. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Great lion sighting in Gala. We got some nice leopard at Juma. Oh, always nice to look at Cape Town as well and Pinda for the bushwalk. Thank you for your question. Join us tomorrow morning and bye for now.